trash picks. So for once we have something that's not a trashy old laptop, but rather some uh, fun looking stationary stuff with a couple of years on it and uh, nothing particularly new. Uh, but to start from the top, we have this uh, ASRock uh, H81M-DG4, uh, what's it? ITX motherboard, something like that, tiny thing. Uh, fourth gen core uh, Intel based uh, CPU, uh, uh, motherboard, and uh, it's got a ding on it. Uh, and I think that's probably why well, this thing has been discarded. It seems as if someone's like dropped it into the case or something like that, and it's just gone bad. It uh, wasn't lying in the dumpster in a way uh, that suggested that damage would have occurred. Uh, as it was being tossed out. So I think if I can get this under a microscope at work, there's a decent chance this thing might live again and actually have a uh, uh, an i7-4770 lying around with no motherboard to go in. So that would be a cool combination. This could perhaps even go in the uh, big TV PC, which I've got sitting around, which is just equipped with a, a first gen i5. So that would be a very welcome upgrade. Uh, moving on down, we have a first gen i7 a Dell Tower. It's uh, It looks like that. It uh, came with this uh, i7 860 just uh, kind of lying around uh, beside it. I have no idea if that's going to work. I, I just threw this in the case. It's been uh, roughed around a bit, but it doesn't seem to be in too bad shape. I think the reason this must have been discarded is because uh, someone's Arctic Silver 5'd it and gotten it all over. So that could just be a matter of cleaning it up and uh, getting it uh, back online. Uh, that's a decently quick CPU, even by modern standards. It gets about 5,000 points in CPUbenchmark.net, and which isn't, that's perfectly usable. Uh, I currently classify anything below 2,000 as uh, too slow for consideration today. So that's uh, twice faster than it needs to be. This also has like 8 gigs of really slow DDR3 lying around in 2 gig sticks, so that's pretty trashy. Focus. 2 gigs, 8500, yuck. Slowest memory you've ever seen. And it's got also the slowest GPU you've ever seen, a NVIDIA Quadro FX380, uh, which scores a whooping uh, 150 points in videocardbenchmark.net. So that's an awful GPU, but uh, I actually took the whole thing for the GPU because even though it's dog slow, it's got dual dual link DVI connectors on it, which is rather unusual. Uh, that's a very good feature for driving test bench stuff. Uh, you can adapt that to VGA, DVI, Dual Link DVI, or HDMI, whatever you need, except, except for DisplayPort, and pretty much everything modern's got DisplayPort built in anyway, so that's a useful thing. Uh, so this is a Lenovo, I think, so. oh yeah, it's got a, uh, it's actually a Samsung tablet. Uh, no, this, this is a Lenovo, uh, think, center edge, uh, consumer grade, a PC, a second gen i5. It's got an i5 2400S in it, which is about the same speed, about 5,000 points in CPU benchmark as the first gen i7 we got. So, this too is a decent machine. And I'm thinking, I have. Is this motherboard the same? This came from another. A socket 1155 IBM or Lenovo. Are these the same? These boards look very similar. Uh, I know this board was bad for no obvious reason. Uh, yeah. I think this might be the same board. So, uh, very likely this is just suffered mainboard failure, then, and we'll have to investigate that. Uh, this one I just scrapped because I didn't care. I already had more motherboards than CPUs, but right now I had, I have even <laughs> CPUs and motherboards, and they're all in service. So, yeah, this one is attractive to get running as a whole system. The case is also reasonably fresh, reasonably fresh. They've never bothered taking the 
protective plastic off. So that's going to look excellent once we get it up, uh, cleaned up a bit. Uh, it's got, I think, four gigs of DDR3, something or the other. Surprising, it'll you might have them, but if they still have RAM in them, they usually come without RAM. So that's very good. Uh, what's that? 180 watt power supply or something like that? Uh, total 170 watts, so that's garbage. And uh, I just took this for shits and giggles. This is like a 2011 Samsung tablet, which was just lying there. 16 gigs, it's probably quite useless, probably running Android 3 point something or Android 4. Piece of trash, just fear that. If it works, I'll just give it away. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, start by testing out the uh, uh, Lenovo Tab because that's the most interesting part. So this is the uh, uh, Core i5 second gen board, which I'm really hoping is gonna work. Uh, I had a quick gander inside the power supply with the light and this actually looks like a decent PSU. It's an Acabel brand. PC8061C seems to be the model number. Uh, and uh, it's got uh, Japanese caps on the secondary side and they look fine. I'm suspecting this might be a, a rather high hour PC because it's got uh, uh, writing on it uh, talking about some PLC thing. So it's probably been a control PC of some sort uh, just running all day, every day since the day it was purchased. So, uh, we'll have to have a listen to how the fans go and make a judgment call on the condition of everything else from that. But uh, it's hooked up. I just plugged the power supply back in. It was disconnected by a previous tech. And let's turn the power on. Okay. That's a nicer PC you can make. And hey, image. Fun failure. Well, that sounded very much like a completely bonkers uh, PSU fan. Uh, this one's failed because it's uh, not plugged in. So let's just do that and see what kind of noise that makes. Hmm. Not too bad. But yeah, I'm gonna wait you. This thing has. Uh, probably gotten tossed out because the power supply was making bad noises and probably overheated after a while uh, because even though it's probably a, a reasonably efficient unit can't see any 80 plus stuff on it it's probably about 80 plus something like that anyway uh, and uh, yeah it's just going to overheat after a while with no fan but the motherboard works that's the important part cpu works ram works four gigs that's excellent. Let's move on. All right, so this is a Dell Precision T1500. Uh, originally came with a Core i7-860. And uh, if we ripped out surprisingly, uh, the CPU socket seems to be in good shape. Uh, there seem to be no bent pins, even though this was full of stuff, and I shoved it full of stuff and carried it home. So that's good. That's probably in good nick. Uh, this power supply does have Chinese caps in it, and none are obviously bulging. Uh, so I do dare just hooking this thing up as it was, as it came, and seeing if it's uh, going to run. Uh, the GPU if is, uh, yeah, we'll just leave that in for the time being. A uh, really terrible old thing, that. But if it works, I'm going to be happy. So uh, the RAM is not installed, it's got a smashed hard drive. Excellent work, actually. Uh, smash the controller board like this. It's not the most efficient way of quickly destroying consumer data. I'd rather just mechanically drill through the drive because you could technically still get data off of this if you really, really wanted to. I'm just going to toss it, take the magnets, of course, because I don't care about the data that's on this thing, uh, and I shouldn't. Uh, I just care about the hardware and reusing it with an SSD. Uh, so, uh, let's just find all the RAM sticks which are lying around here somewhere. I was actually just going to uh, rip the RAM out of this thing because it doesn't feel like carrying home two towers. Uh, but then I found the CPU lying beside it, so I figured, alright, I'll just take the whole thing. If it was, there we go, there's the fourth stick. 
So we have four, uh, I believe, two gigabyte modules, real slow DDR3, <laughs> as you'd expect in a first gen uh, core to duo. Yeah, there's some matching, a later focus, genuine Dell memory. Uh, so let's just uh, get this hunk of junk out of there, destroy it, and uh, load the rest of the hardware up and see if it's going to beat. I'm questioning that thing, but we'll see. Yeah, that's not how you apply Arctic Silver 5. That's gonna cause you some issues. And a few Q-tips later and some alcohol, and we've arrived at something looking pretty decent. This chip is, uh, if, it, if this chip works, it's uh, not gonna be hampered by Arctic Silver 5 anymore. So let's just get fast and the Roman stalls and be on our way. Bit of isopropyl alcohol on the pad as we put it in, just in order to help displace any dust and debris in the socket, and in it goes. Plop, Robbie Pokey, slam, bang. One CPU. Same goes for RAM, some alcohol on there just to keep it greasy, and in they go. Can I aim the camera one-handed while doing this? I don't know. We're about to find out. That one's gonna match with the other blue one, not that it quite matters. But we'll put the green ones in the blue ones and the blue ones in the black ones just to make it look good. It sort of been a reasonably high-end machine back in the day. I mean, the i7-860, back in, what, 2010? That was that was a pretty beefy CPU. Beefy thermal design, for sure. So we're going to need something like that. Penium 4 heatsink. Oh, man, these pushpins aren't going to fit. Let's see what we have underneath there. Ah, this one has no push pins. Excellent. Copper slug, it's old. Cooling. Good enough, it's gonna work. Huh. No VGA. Why is this thing not focusing on anything today? So we have an adapter. Pokey, pushy. VGA power. Hang gig. Hang gig gig. And keyboard mouse. There we go. We're in business. I'm sure this is fine. Power. Oh, power's already on. We have fan spin. Fan slow down, that's good. That fan sounds horrid. Green LED? No. No, that's not a green LED. I'm lying. Yeah, perhaps it's actually... It's probably going to be using the GPU since it has one. These tend to disable the integrated graphics when they get the chance. Hey, there we go. Picture i7-860. Do we have 8 gigs of RAM? Oh yeah. 8 gigabytes of the slowest DDR3 you ever saw. 1067. Why? Alert! CPU fan failure. Hmm. No shit. This thing is already heating up. How much power is this thing even drawing? Not 1.35 kilowatts. <laughs> uh, about 100 watts sitting around. Gonna cool that down when it uh, enters an OS. Probably gonna idle at about 60 or something like that. 
So not too bad. Yeah, it's certainly not a, an energy efficient computer by any means. Wow, that's getting warm. But uh, certainly serviceable. But yeah, that fan. Christ, has to go. But another winner. A GPU furnace. Yeah. Die. There we go. All better. So that just leaves us the tablet, but uh, no micro USB. It's that old that it doesn't even have micro USB. Uh, I know if this thing pass on, maybe I'll actually do it again. Give this play before. Yeah, there you go. But it complains about low battery, so uh, this thing's probably just fine, except it's ancient and worthless. And God, that's not a good screen. Jeez, by today's standard, that's so bad. But yeah, this could be useful. I mean, you could turn this into a novelty clock, if nothing else, just bolt it to the wall. Samsung. Yay. So, yeah. Yeah. Pretty useless. But probably works. Yeah, low battery. All right, so let's get to the most exciting part, which is the uh, H81M uh, motherboard. So this is a, a Haswell processor. It's uh, just dating from 2014 or maybe even 2015. Uh, so this is a rather modern thing. Uh, so it's rather dog-eared. It's got a bunch of little nicks here and there from being tossed around and possibly abused by the previous owner, but the biggest fault is uh, it's got a big tear on the bottom side and actually took this into work and uh, reworked this under a microscope. So we've got four tiny jumper wires going there uh, to wherever those uh, traces are going. Uh, so I haven't found anything else obviously broken on this board, uh, so I think we're pretty ready to give this a test go. However, the only CPU I have to test this with is an i7-4770, which is the third highest end CPU you could even get for this platform. Uh, so I'd rather not risk breaking this CPU in case we have something wrong with this board. Uh, so the first thing uh, I want to do is make sure that we don't have a shorted uh, CPU voltage reg. Uh, and the way I'm going to test that is by just shoving one probe into the ATX 12 volt connector, which is feeding this VRM, uh, make sure we're on the positive, which we are since we're not beeping to ground. And then I'm going to measure to the positive lead of all three output caps here. Because if we get a beep from the input side here to the output side there, and a very low resistance, then we'll have a shorted uh, uh, MOSFET and or diode. And that means we're going to get 12 volts to the CPU and uh, basically turn this thing into a MacBook. So, here we go. And we have nothing. That's very, very good. So, judging from that, I would say we're pretty confident in shoving the i7 in here and giving this thing a go. And off camera, I have had a bit of a poke around here just to, uh, making sure there are no obvious shorts this will be because this is across the eight put caps and there's about 100 ohms across there but that's not an issue since it's about one volt going through it. So let's uh, dig up some RAM, uh, some kind of horrible heatsink and see if this thing is going to give picture. Exciting. There you go, if you don't believe me that actually is an i7-4770 we're using as a test CPU because that's the only fourth gen chip I have and it's not even mine, so thank you Alferic for providing a test chip. Uh, so we're pretty much wired up now, just have the ATX 12 volt connector left from my terrible terrific face like. And that's it. Got the RAM out of the Lenovo desktop because we know that booted. Uh, so this thing, if the motherboard's okay, 
if my repair has worked, should her on. And yes, I have reseated the CMOS battery. So let's go. All right, and here we go. We've got a monitor hooked up with DVI, no HDMI on this board, which is weird. Uh, terrible cool installed, terrible terrific power supply installed. Everything ought to be hooked up and ready. I'm keeping an eye on a power meter to guard ourselves from fires. And here we go. So we're gonna stand by and doing nothing. So we probably need to flick the switch, the power switch on the board. And I've got no bloody idea what that is. All right, here we go. Power supply turned on for a second. Drawing 38 watts, 48 watts, 50. That's quite a bit of power for this. Back to 35. Hey, we've got picture. We've got picture. It's drawing 55 watts, which is quite a bit of power. But then again, this is a terrible power supply. The fan stopped working in it. Man, I wonder why a fan isn't working. That could be why. 12 volts or 5 volts? 12 volts. Fixed. And it's detecting a CPU. i7-4770 at 3.4 gigahertz. All our 4 gigs of RAM are showing up. I think this thing might live. Now, the big question is if it's going to detect a video card because uh, the broken traces on the bottom, I believe, are going to the PCIe 16X slot. So let's just rip out the video card out of the uh, ancient Dell desktop we saw earlier and see if that's going to detect. Ah, the NVIDIA Quadro FX380. Behold the enterprise power. So let's just kind of shove this in here somehow. That works. And DVI in there. Which one's number one? That one. Well, let's see if this is gonna power on as well, or if it's gonna spew flames. Flick. Fan turns. It's drawing more power. I've got picture. So I do think we've fixed this thing. 70 watts idle. Yeah, Haswell's are power hungry and G96 based <laughs> GPUs are power hungry. This bloody thing's drawing 10 watts just sitting around. Gosh. But yeah, that's good. Working system. F2. Yep, that's running just fine. All right, I went to the effort of putting on a marginally less horrifying cooler, so let's see if this thing's actually gonna boot into an OS. I will just stab it with some scissors. That hard drive's making horrible noises. Has my test drive finally died forever? That's not doing well. There we go. What's this a bad power connector? This power supply's trash. I think this thing's actually got an incredibly unstable 12 volt rail because we probably don't have enough load on a 5 volt for it to be happy. So we could possibly be just killing everything right now. I'm betting we're going to see a wildly varying voltage when we shove our multimeter probes into the 12 volt connector on this thing. Mark my words. Eh, it's woven spec. We are booting though. Need to install our devices. But hey, we're in an OS. On a PC built entirely from scrap in a borrowed CPU. I'm completely happy with this. I'm completely happy with this. Not a problem. Hey, we're even getting good temps. So there we go. We got two. 
rather old but still reasonably useful PCs and a completely decent uh, four-year-old motherboard in the trash completely for free. This is a, certainly not a bad trash run. I must say I'm very happy with this. I'm extremely happy with how repair for uh, that uh, socket 1150 whatever Haswell is board turned out because that's that's certainly a useful board. It's tiny, very tiny, but tiny boards are in right now. So I'm going to have to thank you for watching and uh, make sure you enjoy yourself.